Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative. In today's tutorial, I am going to show you how I created this beautiful breathe butterfly design. I am completely in love with how this came out and of course you guys know I'm gonna show you exactly how I put it together. All the products that I use today will be listed and linked down in the description box, and you can even find some discount codes there as well to save you a little bit of extra money. Before you leave, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And that seems to be about it. Let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. All right, so I am actually starting with a sublimation tumbler. So I got these sublimation tumblers for a great deal and I could not pass them up. And so although I do have a sublimation printer, I don't actually do sublimation as of yet. I haven't even taken my printer out of the box, but you can still use these for glitter and epoxy. The way that you need to be able to use them is you really wanna make sure you're giving these cups a really good sand. We wanna sand all of that sort of sub, sublimatable gloss right off of the top of this surface. And then at that point, we should be able to base paint and spray paint it to however color or whatever color we need to use. If you're choosing to keep the base white for the purpose of your project, you certainly don't have to base paint unless you're going to be using alcohol inks that I recommend base painting because alcohol inks will repel off any sublimated surface just because of the make of that sort of glossy surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a really good sand. I went through like two or three times worth of sanding, more sanding than I would have done for just a traditional stainless steel tumbler because I really wanted to make sure that I had a nicely scuffed up surface before I went to go spray paint this tumbler. So for this cup, I am going to take this outside and I'm going to be spray painting it with two colors. We're gonna be using this sort of beautiful rustic blue and this gray color as well. And right after I've gotten the spray painted and it's dried, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the turner. So the base of this cup is actually just going to be the spray paint. We're gonna be adding some sort of additives here in our epoxy layer as well as some glitter afterward as well. But really most of this is just the spray paint base. So unfortunately I didn't get an opportunity to film the process of me spray painting. My phone ran out of space, so I wasn't able to sort of show you that process, but I will link a couple videos where I show you how I do my ombres when I am using spray paint as my base paint to hopefully help you get a really beautiful blend. Because these colors are so close together though, it really is much easier to blend these more so than some other colors you might be pairing together when trying to do an ombre with spray paint. So I'm going to go ahead and put a nice layer of epoxy on this tumbler, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of Lucid to the rest of the epoxy that's in this cup. And so right now I'm really trying to create like this beautiful, like cloudy sort of background or backdrop to this tumbler to give it a little bit of dimension and a little bit more depth in the tumbler design overall. Since it's such a simplistic design, I really want to make sure that even with the simplicity of the design, it really is going to sort of pop. So I'm just sort of dragging my finger in sort of a swirled motion around the tumbler with those sort of epoxy streaks or strokes of the Lucid uh, alcohol ink. Lucid is from Jen's Crafted Gems. It's her alcohol, alcohol ink and that is in her primary pack. You can buy them singly on her website so definitely make sure to check that out as well. After that, I'm actually going to now drop Lucid directly into the epoxy. And at this point, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create some cells as well as some sort of swirling to kind of make it look like wind or maybe even the path of the butterfly. So sort of to create that sort of cloudy vibe um, with a little bit more sort of opaqueness than the first layer I put in. So as I'm adding the inks, you'll notice that I'm using my fingers um, and kind of making a zigzag motion all over the cup that's going to create those really beautiful sort of like wind looking streaks and so I'm going in various directions to sort of make sure that I again am able to really get that beautiful dimension get a lot of those cells as well and then I can go ahead and hit this with the heat gun or hit this with the torch with my heat gun that's going to help me sort of push things around if I wanted to move things I got a lot of movement though just with the zigzagging of my hand so I really just decided to kind of leave it. I was pretty satisfied with how things were turning out. So we're going to torch this and let this sit overnight to cure. 
Now that my cup is completely cured and hard, I left it on the turner for about six to eight hours or so before I was really able to take it off and work with it. And so we're now here at the next day and we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of glitter. So I'm gonna be using some UV resin as my adhesive for my glitter. Since I'm going to be sprinkling glitter in, I don't really feel like mixing up a bunch of epoxy to do a thin layer or coat. I thought about doing Mod Podge, but I knew that that would dry on me a little bit too quick. So another way that you can certainly add some glitter in just a very fine amount of glitter to your cup is by using UV resin. Obviously you'll need to make sure that this cup gets completely cured, like your UV resin cures before you add the subsequent layers of epoxy over top, but it's a really quick and easy way to kind of speed up the process when you're needing to sort of get maybe a project done. Um, you certainly want to want to do this for, you know, full layers of a cup, but when you're needing to use it as an adhesive for glitter, it's perfect to do so if you need to, but you do need to let it sit in the sun or sit under your UV lamp for a little bit of time, depending on what kind of UV resin you are using. So all of the supplies for my UV resin and my lamp will all be listed down in the description box. At this point now, I have dumped a little bit of Folori from Peachy Olive Glitters and Snowtastic from my Asia Creations on my paper there. And I'm just taking my fingers and just sort of grabbing a pinch of each of the glitter and adding just a little bit of glitter all over the tumbler. I'm trying to cr create kind of the same sort of idea with the zigzags I was creating with Lucid in the epoxy, sort of like zigzag lines of the glitter to sort of line up. My thought process here is to have them line up to where I'll be placing the butterflies so it kind of looks like the path of the butterfly. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. It probably will as sort of the design comes together, but I'm kind of just making sure to create little zigzags all over the cup. That way I have different places to be able to put the butterflies. I'm following Snowtastic right along the same line as Filori, so both of those sections of glitter or pieces of glitter are sort of right next to each other in that same sort of path and, uh, and direction. Then I'm going to go ahead and put this under my UV lamp. I did let this run for about seven cycles. I ended up setting it up sort of over my, my turner and just, you know, stacked it on a couple of boxes so that I could get this cured, but seven cycles and that was good. I definitely would recommend leaving it outside though if it is a nice sunny day because I was working on this at night. I didn't have the opportunity to. So here are the decals. So I did go ahead and already get the decals sort of cut out of Cricut. Um, all of the SVGs I will link down in the description box as well as the Breathe SVG. That was actually something I got from Creative Fabrica. The watercolor butterflies that I'm using, I did hand cut them out, but I did get the file from Creative Fabrica and I printed those on white water slide. So I always use the water slide paper from Hippo a water slide usually. For this though, I'm actually using the koala paper water slide. So I will link that down in the description box for you guys to try out in case you haven't had the opportunity to work with water slide. So of course now we're gonna go ahead and get all of these decals applied. So these really cute, little stencil leaves is just a file I found in Cricut Design Space. You can search sort of Creative Fabrica Etsy for like different stencil designs. I definitely would start in your cut software first and see if there's anything free that you can pull out before you go to like Creative Fabrica um, unless you already have the subscription. I didn't find as many on Creative Fabrica that I really liked so I ended up going to Cricut Design Space and there was more of a selection and choice for me to kind of pick the vibe I was kind of going for uh, but I will link this this down in the description box and a couple of other options that I found upon my own looking. So I have two different sizes of these. I have one really large stencil and then the other three are a bit smaller. They're almost about half the size of that larger one. That larger one is probably about five inches long and the smaller ones are about two and a half or so. So I'm just kind of spacing these out. I want to make sure that sort of the the leaves are present on the cup, but I don't want them sort of in the middle of the cup anywhere. So I'm trying to keep them kind of towards the edges or the top or bottom of the cups because I really want my butterflies to be sort of in that free floating space. 
Now I'm gonna take this Breathe decal and we're gonna actually put this at an angle on the cup. I just really wanted to kind of almost make it look like it's floating, very similar to like the butterflies and how we'll place those next. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of place this directly in that center section, right nestled between those two stenciled leave sections in a diagonal. That way I leave enough room to be able to place all of the butterflies all the way around the cup and surrounding the decal. So now that our decals are placed, we're gonna go ahead and go right into applying our water slide. So the I've done water slide application with you guys before, and I actually did a whole video that I will link down in the description box about using water slide, the difference between clear water slide and white water slide, and how you can use them as well as applying them onto your tumblers. And so really the process is quite easy, but it is one of those processes that unless you play with water slide enough, sometimes your first couple goes at it can certainly be difficult. Sealing is usually the biggest issue when it comes to water slide for people. And if you don't seal it correctly, you tend to run into more issues than, than normal. So my rule of thumb is I always do at least three to four coats of clear gloss spray paint. And I make sure that each layer dries in between. I make sure that my water slide paper is always on a flat surface of some sort while it is drying to make sure that it gets a nice proper seal. And then afterwards is when I will cut all of the decals out if I need to, um, or if you need to run those through your Cricut or your cutting machine, if that's what you choose to do. I also recommend using sort of warmer water. I do find that warmer water definitely allows the backing to come off a little bit easier and make the paper a little bit softer and easier to use. Colder water tends to take a little bit longer for your water slides to need to soak and really it shouldn't be any longer than you know 15 to 20 seconds to really soak the backing off so that the top layer is completely sort of movable and able to kind of very easily push off of the backing paper. So I know I didn't really explain the process very much, but again, I have plenty of tutorials where I use water slide. I use water slide quite a bit. I don't use white water slide as much, but I do use water slide for a lot of my designs. So definitely check out a couple of the tutorials on my channel if you need a more in-depth look at how to use water slide and different tips and techniques I have shared in previous videos. So after we've gotten our butterfly decals applied with our water slide, we're gonna go ahead and I always like to take a dry paper towel and just very carefully go over the water slide decals, making sure that everything is nice and flat and kind of just get that initial bit of water off that surface. The water slide decals will continue to shrink or constrict as they dry, of course. So be mindful and just make sure you don't play with this too much. But after this, this cup went back on the turner for two final coats and here's the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. I know it was a short one, but it was a lot of fun, a really simple and easy design that I hope you guys try. And you guys know I will see you in the next one. Bye.